Party with IT Maine as more than 30 players for the Indiana State University soccer team are alleging years of psychological and emotional abuse by their now former head coach. That coach mutually parted ways with the school last month. The women are now sitting exclusively with Jasmine Miner to share their story of trauma and of redemption. 17 pages worth of players keeping track of the manipulation, anxiety, depression, even body dysmorphia stemming from the verbal abuse they say they suffered from former head coach Julie Hanley. It's known as the binder, and it was just the beginning. Some have found healing. Others, it's still haunting. You were weekly giving your weight. Weekly giving every intake of food that I had. Like, I would write down every single, like, calorie, carb. That's just one bullet point. For a while, I would really not eat much throughout the day, and then at night, I'd be starving. You were binging. Yeah. In 17 pages. My name's Pamela Silius. I was on the team from 2016 to 2019. We had some girls who were typing it and getting everything together and when we all looked at it we were like this is real like this is not normal it's the binder former players say that details psychological abuse endured from former indiana state university women's soccer head coach julie hanley 27 players came forward we are here 27 strong we don't want 27 people to leave we want one Person. They say some of her actions were direct NCAA violations, including mandatory workouts known as the Breakfast Club. It was on your off day. Mm -hmm. We would receive a message, it was like at nighttime the day before, and it would be the list of the girls who had to go in and run the next morning. NCAA Division I rules mandate at least one day off a week during the season, but the girls say that their mandate was training every day. We would Basically, you'd just sprint on the treadmill until you would pass out. And then came book club. So my name is Katie Webb, formerly Katie Wells, on the ISU soccer team from 2015 to 2018. We would read, like, certain passages that we were sent. Passages describing difficult personalities, with players' names written down by Coach Hanley. And I think once that email came out, with preconceived names and notions of what your personality was on this team, I think it broke some people. My name's Carly Chiato. I was at ISU from 2016 to 2018. She gave us each cards of our players, and we had to write a negative and a positive about said player. And the only thing I remember was that the negative that was written about me was that I cared more about partying than I did about soccer. And I didn't even know what to say. They tell me it was even harder to watch their injured teammates forced to be on practice equipment duty. Girls who were recovering from ACL, some were treated more like um, field managers in the moment, you know, fetching balls, grabbing cones. We're on a football field, you know, and it's turf. One ball gets hit too far, that's 100 yards of walking right there. And this binder, it isn't new. It was 2017 that the binder and stuff happened. Coach Hanley, however, part of the school this past December. In a statement, the school tells me when the players presented the binder in the spring of 2018 to the administration, including athletic director Sherrard Klinkscales, a 27-page report found no violations whatsoever of any NCAA rules, university policies, or state or federal laws or regulations. But they tell me the lack of support came at a cost. My name is Jasmine Rowan. Um, I was on the soccer team from 2016 through January of 2018. We're not 27 strong anymore. Um, a lot of the players who had something to do with that binder were released from the team. And say 12 to 15 players were cut from the team or... And you end up leaving. I did, yes. Just left while the cost lingers on. My doctor and I have talked about me going on an antidepressant um, for any type of postpartum care in the future. Yeah, when you become a mom. Yeah, that is a time where I am going to be more vulnerable to her negative comments about me. I was never used to be this way prior to my college experience. Mm -hmm. That was the new discussion we got to have after finishing college. So the National Women's Soccer League they had an investigative report done where they found verbal and emotional abuse was systemic from youth soccer all the way up mm -hmm. from mostly 
coaches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, with that. I would agree. Players, we internalize that. Like, we want to please our coaches because if we don't please our coaches, then we won't play. A spokesperson for the school tells me they took significant measures to ensure the welfare of the women as students and athletes in the women's soccer program. A specific action plan was implemented for the head coach. An ISU board-certified psychologist ensured the students' well-being. Do you think the school was trying to cover their tracks? Absolutely. Oh, yes. absolutely. Yes. I think the administration failed this team, and I believe that, you know, they're still failing this team. These things are happening. Listen to your athletes. My teammate reached out to Coach Hanley about the allegations. She didn't directly address them. She said in a text she was grateful for her time with the team. As these women, I'll try to move on. What would you say to your former head coach? I know what I'd really say. <laughs> if we weren't recording. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I don't have any hatred towards you. I don't have any feelings towards you. I, I can't give her the power over my success. Like, I came through that. Like, I really did that. Jasmine says taking her power back went beyond the pages in the binder simply because of the color of her skin. Stay tuned tomorrow for how she says the abuse came with different consequences as a black woman. I'm Jasmine Miner for Wish TV, IT Mate. IT Mate did reach out to the NCAA to see if they were aware of the allegations or had investigated them separately. Jasmine reports that a sp spokesperson said no comment.